is the GCSC 9 to 1 physics specifications. I'm going to go over the P2 topic, which is forces in motion. It's also one of the topics found in paper 1. Okay, so we're going to start off with this topic. So the first thing we need to, 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 to note down is the difference between what we call a scalar and a vector. Okay, so scalars simply have got size or magnitude and vectors have got both size and direction. So if we look down here, got a couple of examples of what are uh, just scalars. So speed, mass, time, distance, energy, and power are, are all examples of what we call scalars. So we do not attribute uh, or give a direction to these quantities, okay? Whereas if we're talking about acceleration, force, displacement, momentum, weight or velocity, these have respective directions alongside their magnitude okay so please remember for your exam uh, sometimes they come up in multiple choice questions you've got to make sure you're able to identify what quantities are vectors and which ones are scalars okay so um i, I suppose another thing to mention is with regards to vectors sometimes they will not be um uh, you will not the direction will not be uh, like a north or south or east or west but sometimes uh, they will be in the form of pluses and minus signs, okay? When we look at momentum later on, um, a plus sign will be in one particular direction and then the minus sign will denote the opposite direction, okay? It doesn't really matter which one, uh, which direction you place the plus sign in, as long as you're consistent in your questions, um, in the questions that you're answering, uh, and, and you know a plus and a minus are opposite, okay? So just, uh, just something to note down there. Right. Um, Next equation, which is a really, really easy equation, okay, is the speed uh, equals distance over time equation. I tell my students, I say, uh, this is one of the easy equations to remember. If you just look at the motorway, you think about, or you look at the um, the speed limit signs, 30 miles per hour or, or 70 miles per hour, the fact that that MPH, miles, is a distance, okay, per, that's kind of like divide, uh, uh, over an hour, hour is 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 time. Okay, so generally the SI units are meters per second. Okay, but sometimes, I mean, if you think about uh, the motorway miles per hour, that, that sort of helps you uh, remember the equation. Okay, if you don't know already. Okay, so I mean, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Uh, you should know from primary school or just everyday experience. Uh, a high speed means that you're covering a, a large distance in a short time. Low speed completely the opposite, okay? Right, uh, the next thing we're gonna be looking at are distance time graphs. If you look at these three distance time graphs here, okay, if we look at the y-axis here, we notice that the distance literally stays the same, okay? It's, it's one constant value as time progresses, okay? So a straight horizontal line denotes that uh, the object is stationary, it is not moving, okay? If we go on to this graph here, Notice now that the distance is steadily uh, and constantly increasing, okay? And this is what we call constant speed. So if you do see a, see a straight line in, in one of your exams and it's a distance time graph uh, and it follows this form, we know that that uh, particular object or vehicle is going at a constant speed. And this is in the positive, positive direction, okay? If, if the car or vehicle was going the opposite way, obviously the line would be um, going the uh, going the other way, okay? Talk about acceleration now. Now, this is quite important for you to, 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 to understand. If we, if we now look at our line, okay, the gradient, okay, if we if I, if I draw tangents, which is literally a, a straight line at a particular point on this graph, okay, the gradient is slowly increasing constantly, and this is what we call constant acceleration, which means the speed is slowly increasing in value at a constant pace. So if you see a curved line like this, that denotes constant acceleration. Okay, so again, the, the gradient, uh, and if I just go over uh, the gradient again, it's it's rise, so the difference in your y-axis, so if you're in your, in your exam, and let's say we had some values here, okay, so we, we would go across uh, like this, let's say this was a 40, Okay, and that was going to go down here, and this was a 10. So my um, my difference would be 40 minus 10, so that would give me 30, uh, and then divided by whatever my respective line here. Okay, so basically you want to, to make up a triangle between two points 
then it's going to be this length divided by this length and make sure you've got your correct um, length in terms of your x axis and your y axis so it's rise over run that's going to give you give you the gradient for that particular line okay so i'm uh, going to move on now to the next equation which is acceleration okay this means that we've got a change in velocity over a specific time period okay so this symbol means a change in velocity sometimes uh, it'll be written down as uh, v minus u so v is the final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by the time interval okay the time between the two two velocities so again literally uh, you've got to be able to just rearrange this equation sometimes you can put it, put it in a triangle but make sure you're able for your exam to rearrange this equation to either get uh, a change in velocity or the time or the acceleration okay we're going to talk about what negative acceleration means so literally the object is decelerating okay it's slowing down one one important thing to note down if the question's asking you for deceleration okay and you've put in your values uh, in the change in velocity and it gives you a negative answer please quote the answer as a positive value okay negative acceleration is deceleration okay right next equation is this one okay so v squared minus u squared equals two times the acceleration times the distance okay sometimes they will use d sorry they will use s as d uh, and sometimes they'll quote the equation v squared equals u squared plus 2as please make a note of the units as well notice acceleration has got new units of meters per second squared okay and, and again uh, as i mentioned before v stands for the final velocity u stands for the initial velocity right we're now looking at velocity time graphs so velocity time graphs slightly different to a distance time graph this time if an object is stationary it means that the velocity is literally zero so that's why we now we now have got a horizontal line literally falling on the zero uh, value of the y-axis okay and as time progresses it literally stays there okay if we now got constant velocity meaning our vehicle is moving at a constant speed it will it will be a horizontal line at one particular value of the velocity okay so if it's a high velocity it would be horizontally across there if, if it was a lower velocity it would be uh, down here okay if you've got constant acceleration it means our velocity is slowly increasing okay so it means the line is going to be like this okay and again we've said deceleration is literally the opposite so it should follow this trend now there's two things we can work out in a velocity time graph one is the acceleration and the acceleration can be found by the gradient of a line so again same principle it's going to be rise over run so whatever this fa this value is here minus this value here that's going to be your length in the y axis divided by your x axis okay length in time that will give you your acceleration the other um interesting thing you can work out from a velocity time graph is the distance traveled okay and the distance traveled is going to be the area underneath your line now there's multiple ways you can do this depending on the question if they've given you some sort of grid okay you may be able to work out the area of a particular square okay and it's just going to be that length multiplied by the length in velocity then you can count up approximately the number of squares underneath the line okay that's one way of doing it it's perfectly acceptable uh, as long as you make it clear to the examiner how much uh, one square is worth and then you count up your your boxes uh, and multiply it accordingly now the other way is obviously by creating just shapes underneath your 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 line so if we look at this graph here notice we can create a rectangle here so we can work out the velocity sorry we can work out the area of this rectangle so it's going to be this length multiplied by this length plus we can then work out the area of this triangle here okay so it's going to be this length times this length divided by two okay right the other thing in p2 that you need to be able to do is to work out the acceleration or be able to describe an experiment where an object accelerates 
or decelerates between two particular points, okay, or two distances. One way of doing that is obviously to measure the time it takes to pass the first distance and then uh, the change in its velocity as it passes the next distance. Okay, you can obviously use a stopwatch uh, to do this, but that introduces human error. So to make it more accurate, we can use light gates, which starts the, the timing uh, as it passes, passes one point and then ends uh, the timing uh, once it passes the second point. Um, and then it does that for the second distance. Okay. So that's just a, a more accurate way of, of, of measuring uh, time and acceleration. Okay. Right. The next thing that we're going to look at is basically, you know, you just need to use your common sense with, you know, giving different activities their respective speed. So you should know the speed of sound is roughly 330 to 340 meters per second um, in, in, in air. Okay. Um, you should know that aeroplanes are generally faster than trains, trains are faster than, than, than cars and so on. Okay. So you're not expected to know walking is 1.3 meters per second on average. Okay. But it, it's a good idea to, to roughly know um, the differences in activities or relative differences. The other important thing on Earth, you should know that the acceleration due to gravity, denoted by G, is 10 meters per second squared. Okay, at the Edexcel GCSE specifications, they want you to use 10 meters per second squared. Okay, unless you do A level physics, uh, it's you please use 10 meters per second squared. Right, we're going to also be looking at resultant forces which is, if we look at these diagrams, what does a resultant force mean? Well, it means if there's an overall force in one particular direction. So if we look at this car here, okay, we've got 500 newtons to the left, 500 newtons to the right. Now that can mean several, uh, two things. Either the car is stationary, as it states here, or if it's already constantly moving, it will remain. It will continue to move at constant speed, okay? You're only going to get an acceleration if you've got an excess or a resultant force in a particular direction. So here we've got 300 newtons to the right, that's 500 minus 200. Here we've got 300 newtons to the left, okay, so we've got deceleration, okay. And it's given by this equation here, which is Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration, okay, which states that if you've got an overall resultant force, we're going to get an acceleration, okay. And this ends this video. Uh, on P2. We will continue P2 in the next video. Mm -hmm.